Hi everyone, my name is Ron Smoenberg. I'm an action actor. I'm in the business for 23 years. If you are that guy with a lot of talent and passion and love for the art, love for what you do, you have a dream and somehow you feel that something is wrong, I'm going to explain to you about the locks in life. The biggest enemy to your dream and goal is not the opponent in the ring. It's a social society around you which supports you or blocks you in this. What happens with a lot of people is their dream and passion is slowly vanishing. They become a shadow of themselves. They slowly disappear into society. Because the system of society and everything around us is being set up to become a kind of debt slave in fear. So we become very dependent on, on what other people think of us, uh, what we possess. Uh, things maybe in our hearts doesn't really make us happy. But, but we, we're supposed to believe this. And, and this fear is overtaking uh, our whole life. And before we know, our passion and our flame right, is dimmed till there's nothing left. It starts very innocent and it looks like society is helping you. you know? Ah, yeah, uh, we, we, we work towards this pension. I'm going to get back to that later. Because when you're 65, you are allowed to enjoy life. So let's start with a student loan. Oh, you can borrow money from the government. And it helps you with studying. Yeah, studying for something, maybe a job your parents want you to do. And then, uh, yeah, you have to pay it back. Right? And so then you have some debt. So it's like a loop, you know, something which makes you slide in. It slides you straight into debt. And then you, you have your job and, and then people need to have a car to go to the job. You need to have a house because everybody has a house. And then you need, you have your mortgage. Now you need, you know, you need to get this, to get that, to be part of this society. Because else you don't belong to the group. And, and there's nothing, nothing worse than not belonging to the group, is it? I think it's not the case. I think we are humans. We have some special uh, thing and to be unique and different is great. And then that is humanity for me. To be part of a group and disappear is, is uh, for people who are very scared. And, and, and this kind of safety, which I will prove this is not safety. So yes, ask yourself, what is real well-being? Having this car and having this girl who don't really want your dream anyway and having these fake circumstances, and I'm so cool, and I'm trending, I need to have this, I need to have this brand, uh, brand sensitivity. You know, <laughs> my mom taught me one thing, I have to tell you this. My mom uh, fooled me for one year, like she said those are brand clothes, but she faked it. And for one year I was walking in those clothes which are the cheapest of the cheapest, and I felt great. And after one year she confessed, Ron, those clothes are from the cheapest brand ever. And then I thought, like, why I need to belong to this group? Because I was a, a kid, I was sensitive for brands. Then I said, it doesn't, it doesn't care at all. It's just, it doesn't matter. It's just how you feel about it, how you feel inside. It's all about our internal well-being and how we can, you know, beam that to, to other people. That's what it's about. It's not about material or, or be part of something. It's all fake, it's all bullshit, and it's all based on fear. And people with passion, they think, okay, I just have to train hard, or I have to, you know, do a lot of this, do a lot of that to get success. So they have passion, they have devotion, so they have the two things. But they forgot number three. Number three is sacrifice. Sometimes this sacrifice, you don't need to do active. Like, okay, I'm going to sacrifice this chicken, and then I'm going to get this. It's not like that. Or I'm going to sacrifice this relationship, and then this will come. No. Sometimes you're being put in front of a very serious choices you have to make. People let you choose sometimes, like, like oh, if you don't love me, then, uh, you know, why you go train every day? It, it, sometimes the choices will come to you. You have to make choices, and they can be very, very tough. Those are also sacrifices. Passionate, and they don't want to hear about that at, at office sometimes. Like, uh, hey, focus on your job, you know? Oh, you're this guy, you're, the, you're a little bit funny, man. Hey, I think you should, you know? Focus on your job. Uh, some girls. Oh, you don't love me? Why you go training uh, tonight again? Uh, I'm waiting for you. And all those 
uh, you know, I'm going to talk about this more, but subtle things, like I'm waiting for you, you know? So you're going you're gonna to compensate. You're not going to train that much anymore because your girl is waiting on the couch and maybe she's going to give you a bonus. You know what I mean, right? And, and maybe, okay, let's cut 10 minutes. Let's go home quick, right? And before you know, you compensate and, and your fire is gone and your fire turns into different things, different fires. And, and the same as addictions, right? Like, like for example, gaming. And, 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 and sex, sorry to say, sex, gaming, and all those things is great. But just see that as a bonus, all right? It's a little early in the video I talk about this, but see this as a bonus. And then, and then you know, then everything becomes more interesting. And then you can celebrate success because you also have to celebrate uh, things you achieve. But if the celebration becomes more than, than the real thing, then it's off balance and then things start to get wrong. If you are that guy with that passion and you lose it, do you think uh, you, 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 you stay interesting for a girl? I had one guy uh, in my childhood, he was a famous football player and uh, he, he did really well. And he was about to go to the national team and his girlfriend said, you know what, you know, uh, don't forget about me. So he, he skipped trainings to see his girl on the couch and what they did on the couch, you can imagine. And he was young, it was all new for him. So he was like, this is very exciting. But he also had this big talent, so he started to give up on this. The problem is he said, oh, my girlfriend is everything, you know? She's everything. So the guy lost his passion. So do you think this guy was interesting for this girl after a while? A passionless guy, without any goal. Just be a ball and chain hanging on the couch with that girl. That girl is gonna be bored. And what happened? She broke up, he lost his passion, he lost everything. And I heard this story when I was very young and it started me to realize. So for me, I encountered the same stuff. Uh, when Jackie Chan came to Holland, I did uh, the movie, Who Am I? But before that, I had a lot of trouble. The day before, and this is a real story, guys. The day before I was supposed to be on set with Jackie Chan, I was about to go to, uh, to Greece with my girlfriend. And I had to cancel the holiday one day before my suitcase was, was ready, you know? And I, I, I had to tell her, like, like, I'm sorry, I can't go. And that was, a f I was crying on the phone, like to explain her. And, and, uh, and at the end, it cost my relationship. And this girl I had for five years, it was my first love of my life. And I lost her because of this. Also, my best friends, I, they couldn't handle it. And yeah, it's, it's very weird what happened. I lost my job. Because my boss said, yeah, okay, I, I let you go a few days, but the shooting keep on going and going. So he tell me, if tomorrow you not arrive on, uh, on the office, I'm going to fire you. And then I had to call him again. I'm sorry, but we have one more day shooting. He said, he got really angry. Like, he didn't talk to me anymore. And the funny thing is, uh, a week later, I arrived. I, I came to the office, and I just sat down and started work. He said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm working," he said. Uh, and they, everybody was laughing at the office, like you know, like uh, I just kept going. And at the end, he kept me. But uh, yeah, after a few years, uh, you know, he he just knew that my dream was really to fly out. And and uh, I went to Hong Kong. I couldn't handle it anymore. You know, I I when you when you when you have this sense of passion and and your dream is you have a taste of it, and that you can do it. Oh, there's no way back. Sometimes I see things happen uh, when I had my students, karate students. They're very fanatic and passionate. And then uh, there's a girl coming and she's coming to watch and, and supposedly to cheer the guy. And I already know from my experience, the next, week, the next week this guy is not coming. He's not showing up. And it can take one or two weeks. And believe me, when people introduce their girlfriend and they come to watch at the, at the, the gym or sport, two weeks, one week later, they're not showing up anymore. And it happened in many cases. So I started to think about stuff like, what's going on? Now, something else. Remember Mike Tyson? You know? He was totally in balance. He had, he, he's winning fights and stuff. And then a lot of private things happened. Like, I think his trainer died, his manager, and, and, and then he got the wrong people. And he had some girl accusing him. For some, for some stuff, and it took him out of balance. So the real fight was not in the ring, what I said in the beginning, it's a different fight. A lot of people, when they have some trouble, or with passion, or with career, 
They, they actually having two fights. It's not the, f it's, believe me, it's not the opponent in the ring. When you prepare well, the chance to win is so much bigger. We had this famous fighter in Holland, uh, Rico Verhoeven, and there was a, an article in the, in the magazine, and I can relate so much to this. And he said, the biggest battle is not, was not in the ring, it was at home. And it was literally an article, it was the, the title of the article, the, the real battle was at home. And so we have to uh, be aware of this and realize this. Some relationships are great, and I'm going to talk about that as well. But some relationships are not like that. And, and some girls, they just want to, they're even proud to, to capture your dream. Like, now he's mine. This guy is mine because I took his dream, you know. Now he's 100% he's mine. He doesn't talk about this anymore, you know. He just focuses on me. And, and they become this attachment. Like this ball and chain, this attachment. And then you're walking with that attachment. You're going to have a dinner. Man, at the end, believe me, you're going to hate this attachment. Like this girl, she took away my dream for the ones who realize it. You know, it's, it's, it shouldn't be like that. And, and it can be different. Like one and one can be uh, 0 0.5 if, you, if you're going to compensate. Like, okay, I'm only going to do what she likes or something. No, one and one can be three. If you have an amazing girl, I have, I have a wife like that. You know, when you're tired, my girl is like, she's making food like, you know, I think you need uh, some power up, you know, and maybe a little bit massage, you know, she's great with that. I mean, okay, it's Thailand and, uh, and, uh, and it's just normal. So I'm optimized for this. And it's, it's not only about my career, you know, you are a team. That's what it is. When you are a team, you empower each other. And I noticed that, sorry to say, in the West, it's more like a kind of battle. And I'm going to make another video about relationships. But it's more like, who's going to do the dishes tonight? Is it me or is it you? And then you have this kind of fake battle to, to show who is more powerful in a relationship. It doesn't matter who's, who's more powerful in a relationship. You're powerful together. Because when you achieve this goal, maybe then in the future you can have more for your family. Right? You, you both achieve stuff. And this whole mindset is totally wrong. So in a real relationship, uh, I call it real relationships. Uh, so not those relationships which are very demanding. In real love, there's no W. Where, when, why, where, where you go, what you do. Uh, why you always train? Why? No. It's unconditional. And then you will always come back to your, to your relation. When you come home and, and you can be yourself, this is what it's all about. It's this kind of mental freedom. And then if you travel, uh, my wife tell me, Ron, if you have to go to America or, or go to China, go. I wait for you. You know, because I know it's important for you. But some people would say, if. Like, and then, then it's conditional. If you do that, then uh, I'm leaving you. Or if you do that, I will not like it. Or if you do that, well, I will go with my, uh, my girlfriends. I will go to the disco and uh, yeah, maybe I find another guy. You know, maybe they won't say it directly like that. But it's just this kind of, you know, they, they create this fear. Like it's, it's becoming conditional. And, and then you're living a life which is, you know, it's like you're under attack all the time. With your boss, with, with your, your relationship, with the social system we're in. Because we have to pay back our, our mortgages. We have to pay back our car. And, and if we don't pay, so we cannot just stop this. We are locked. We are locked in a, uh, in a lot of chains. There's one on your arm, there's one on your leg, there's one on your neck. And, and to really do the stuff sometimes you really want, you have to break them all. So now we're going to do some self-realization. In, in this case it's movie business, but it can be anything. This video is for everyone. I'm going to ask you one question. If I have a big movie, like a, a big part for you in a movie, and you are now, for example, in Holland. I come from Holland. And I tell you, I want you next week on set. And you're going to have this great, great part. Are you able to do it? Can I see you next week? Ask yourself. And are you able to travel? Are you, is, your, is your relationship okay with that? Are your parents okay with that? Is, you know, is everyone okay with that? And then you realize. I actually had this in one case. I had a friend. And he's a great guy, though, but I called him, I said, uh, hey, I have this part for you, uh, are you ready? And he said, uh, actually, yeah, he, he loved it, he said, okay, this is great stuff. And then he slowly started, he was, he was quiet on the phone. And I said, what's going on? 
he said, actually, uh, I'm not sure my girlfriend will like it if I'm going to go for one month. I think I'm going to get fired. I can't pay back my car. I'm going to get trouble with the mortgage. I, I, uh, he couldn't go. And what happened with him years later? Now, now this is funny. His girlfriend left him because something, you know, it was not in balance. It was too manipulative. Remember that word. At that moment, he lost a lot of things, but actually he didn't lose things. He got his freedom. This guy came to Thailand and he was in my place. He stayed with me for like two and a half months. And uh, he did three movies. And it was an amazing time for him. And now, okay, he went back to, a little bit back to safety. Uh, uh, I understand. Uh, and, but he still talks about this moment. He said, Ron, those two months were the best of my life. We were doing adventure. It, it wasn't really always like secure, you know? I call it flatline, secure is flatline. There's no heartbeat. And one week we were like, okay, what are we gonna do next week? You know, it was really like this and we didn't have money. And then suddenly we got this big movie and we were alive and we were like having adventure. We were traveling, we were doing this and that. And he still talks about it. He said, remember Ron, that time in Thailand, it was the best of my life. And, and, and even when he's a grandpa, you know, when he's older, he's still going to talk about that. And then we have the social expectations from others. Oh, I'm going to go to Thailand for uh, like a few uh, months or maybe for longer. Um, because you have to be in the place where it happens. You can't wait till you die. If you're not in the place where it happens, sometimes you have to take risk. And, and if you are a flower, but the soil is like a stone, you will not grow. So you have to find out what's the best place and circumstances and you have to go there or look for it. So in my case, I had to go to Asia because Holland, they had a lot of like romantic movies and children movies. And I, I cannot wait till that, that, that um, movie business develops till, till we're ready for, for action movies. Now it's slowly coming, but that's a different story. So I had to be there. And then people start to ask like, yeah, but what about your pensions? What about this? What about that? What about healthcare? You know, are you sure that you're going to make it? What if you have no money? This and that and all this insecure stuff. Expectations. And that's also when you're younger. Like uh, maybe there's a family tradition. So they want you to do the same. Like the owner of the butcher wants you to be a butcher. Something like that. And it's sometimes very hard to break from those traditions. And, and expectations of others. You know. I wanted to, I didn't want that, but I, I had to want to be a, like an insurance broker because they were making money, you know. It is in my family, they're great guys though, but they were the ones making money. So I had to be like that. So I was in the army still and I, you know, I was training like, like crazy, man. Like, like, you know, in the toilet even doing push-ups and stuff. And then I had to go back to my books. Insurance. Man, there's, there's no more boring subject than that. And I, I just couldn't do it. And I, I, had, a, I had a good study. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand that. Uh, but I just, pff, it wasn't me. You know, and I was just thinking about other things. And then my uncle said, one day, and he was the guy who actually had three sons who were doing insurance. He said, Ron, it was a birthday party. I think maybe one day, you know, you're just going to make money with the thing you're really good at. I, I just feel that. This is not you if, you if you become like everyone. I think you're going to make money with what you're really good at. I feel it. And I stick to that. And believe me, if you really do what you love and you have those circumstances, people who can live with it and adapt it, they will adapt to you as well. So you will create those circumstances. It will, it will create itself. So don't have this fear that I'm going to end up alone or I'm not going to have a family, or, you know, forget about that fear. I'm going to make some final conclusions for you. And it, I, I, I want to shock you with this in a moment. And then about the last uh, subject is pensions. People are going to scare you. Like, what about your pension? You're not going to get it. And I told my dad on the phone years ago, because he told me. I said, you're not going to get it anyway. And look what's happening now. You think those, those companies are eager to pay the pensions? Years ago, they had this, uh, all these uh, advertisements and people were investing in pensions and stuff because they knew 
I think they foresaw that, that they're not going to pay, you know. And now they find all reasons. Yeah, Corona, this, that. You're going to cut the pensions, this and that. You're not going to get it anyway. And then they have those advertisements. They call it golden years. Golden years. What are your real golden years? You are allowed to enjoy after 65. And they had to find some grannies, grandmas, grandpas, who were really happy. So they're really hard to find. Not the happy ones, but the ones who are really still doing stuff. So they went to some tango school. They found some grannies doing tango and dancing. And with the big uh, uh, manipulating text, like, these are your golden years. So, so we have to wait for that. Don't, don't live now. Don't invest now. No, no, no. Those are your golden years. You have to wait for that. Just pay taxes, uh, disappear in society, and wait for your golden years. So, so you're going to give up on your dream get your monthly salary and uh, make everyone happy except yourself for those manipulating golden years uh, I don't think so guys now let's look at a few uh, grandparents or grandpas or grandmas so just look at them I've actually visited some uh, some old uh, people's homes and just to talk to them, I wanted to know about their life experience. And I noticed there are two different uh, kind of older people. There's one, you know, because you get bitter or you, you become happy in your character. So it's not only about natural beauty. It, it starts to shape up, even if you're beauty or not. It's, you, your life starts to actually uh, give marks in your face, like who you really are and, and how your life has been. And you know those bitter people who are always on the money? Yeah, let's, uh, huh? you know, <laughs> they start to, they start to, you know, they start to stiffen up. And, and you, you just know, like, like, there's some people who just shine. So, and this is a, a real story. Think about it, by the way. Okay, so we have number one, uh, uh, grandparents who are very bitter. Like, ah, yeah, yeah, you know, this is not right, and this, they become really bitter, you know. Don't put your finger in your nose, you know, like that. But actually, their life wasn't great, you know, they, of course, maybe they actually, one thing I have to admit, maybe they were great parents and they raised kids really well and, and they just needed that money and safety to raise a family and, you know, so respect for that, you know, but, but maybe they didn't do their real passion and, you know, uh, there's these other people who really did it, like, okay, we went to Spain, you know, when we were 20, we left Holland, we went to Spain, opened this restaurant, and we did it, and now, you know, they wake up like, like, we did this stuff. We, we, we had this mission, and we did it when we were young. And they never regret it, while the other ones maybe think like, what if? What if, uh, yeah, what if I did it when I was 20? What if I could, could go back in time? And instead of staying in the office or doing this, maybe I, I went to this country and, and, and followed my dream. What, what would have happened to me? You know, those questions might, might arise. And also, when you wait for 65, now you see like there's like an epitome of, of, of like cancers and things. And, and, and even with my own dad, sorry to say, guys, he just got his pension and he, we discovered something in him. He's okay now. But so, so you're waiting for all this, this moment, like the moment of truth or the moment of you're allowed to enjoy. And then people start to get sick because suddenly from working and then they start to get into this, you know, into this void and, and then everything pops up. You start to get sick or, or you, are, you are in a different rhythm and, and, and it happens a lot. Like how, how long can you enjoy your pension? Two years? How many years you are alive? Uh, you know, start now. We are, we are alive right now. The real capital is health mental health it's not only the money and and follow society skill capital skill capital is is what you build so you can build that now skill capital doesn't come when you're 65 maybe you can become a painter you know to have some hobbies and stuff so yeah this is the time invest now in yourself right and it's it's all skill capital so the more you do now and live in the moment uh, it's about health health so so it's not always you find it in materials you know, th those things come and go, but, but health and mental health and being in balance is great because that's also what you can give to others. 
you know when you have this party and, and some, some depressed people, they enter the party, the whole mood changes. Be that guy who, who enlights the world, right? We only live once. Let's enlighten the world. Let's, let's become a jam for other people. Because we can be, if, if the flower is open. What's happening right now is everybody is start to get, start to get closed, closed, and you become a shadow of yourself. So I am very confident to make my final conclusion. This is my, my conclusion, okay? You might fight it, you might uh, discuss it. I, that's okay, great. This is just a conclusion for my life. The real risk in life is to disappear into safety. That is the real risk because the safety grid, there is no safety. Look what's happening right now with the corona, right? Do we rely on government who's supposed to protect us? Look what's going on. There's a lot of mismanagement and there's no safety. You can get fired. Like my boss said, right? Everybody's replaceable. Pension's not going to get paid. There's no safety. Do you want to be flatline all your life or you want to have an adventure? I have the guts to say that the real safety is the thing you really love, your passion, what you think you're good at, what you think this, this, will, this will be great. If you're really good at something and your passion, you can, you can make a living out of that. That is the goal. It's not like uh, you, you didn't make it or something. You can make it in a way that you make a living of something you really love. And, and of course, you have your highlights, right? You can have a success. Sometimes it doesn't work. You fail, and, 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 and that's another video. But that's life too. You know, there's videos about you cannot fail enough. But, but in the process and, and in this path with failures and successes and heartbeats and money and no money, and you are alive, guys. Now, look at your life right now. Isn't that great? And for me, that keeps the fire like, like every day. And I don't know what's going to happen next week. But, but within this insecurity, there's also a kind of security. Because at the end, you just know that this is going to work out and this is still going to work out. So, so this is great. So the real safety is actually yourself and what you believe in that about yourself. And you just have to envision this. Like, wouldn't that be great to have my future like this with what I really love? And now you're going to make a plan. And now I want you to do that. I want you to make a plan for yourself and realize the locks we spoke about. And I want you to cut them. Because at the end, you're going to lose them anyway. And this is quite enough hard to say. You're going to lose them anyway. If you're not happy in your relationship and, and you, you are together with this ball and chain, that's not going to go well. It might take five years or you're going to irritate. It might take ten years, you're going to lose it. That job, you're going to lose that someday. You know, this car is going gonna, gonna to go, you know. Uh, okay, the mortgage maybe stays, but that's the debt, yeah. And that's what they want to stay. I got a little bit angry about this. They want to keep you in this debt. They want to keep you in fear. Oh, you might lose this, you might lose that. Well, then you lose it. And then, you know, the worst thing to lose is yourself. The worst thing to lose is your heart, your passion for life. I've seen people losing it, and it's terrible. They're not happy. They call me, Ron, I wish I could do this. It's, 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 it's terrible. I almost lost it a few times as well. But the heart survives. And I want you to survive. That's why life is action, guys. Do it right now. Think about it and change your life. See you soon. Life is action. I love you. I think, guys and girls, this is a big battle. We are all in. We are all in this battle. There's no one excluded. If it is the society or what I said about relationships, we're all in the same battle. And it is about, we're gonna win that. One thing just realize, if you win the battle for yourself, you actually win the battle for others. If you are in balance, you're happy, you're, you feel great, you can also project that on others. And you can do a lot for other people. So I wanna ask you, if you have any experience with this, feel, don't feel shy to share that under the video. Share it with me, uh, share it with people. I like to know about that and maybe you know uh, I can give some advice to you as well or you just answer and other people can read it. I like to be interactive with this. It's a very sensitive subject and I am so sure that, that you have experience with this in any form. 
Let us know. We love you. See you soon.